What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is 12.2, and we're going to get into the max and min functions. So what are those? So it's I think it's a little straightforward, right? So whenever we have something like a max, and then we have some two different functions. I don't know why I put AB. Let's, let's do like f of x g of x and then it equals to whichever the maximum function is depending on the interval right so let's say for example like we have a graph okay and let's call this f of x right f of x that looks like this okay that's f of x and then we have g of x that looks like this this is g of x, and let's say we have intervals at a, b, and I'm just going to call this point here, uh, not a point, just at this uh, portion c, at that length, we're at that position. So what this would look like is when we integrate, when we integrate from a to b, the max function of fg dx. So the way we compute this is, again, it, this is a piecewise function. So because it's a piecewise function, we have to split it, uh, we have to split the interval, right? At ac, well, what is the maximum at, you know, between a, a to c? Here at the maximum, it seems that g of x is the maximum. So at a to c, we would integrate g of x. And then at c to b, at c to b, the maximum function is f of x. Okay, and that's it. So this is how we would integrate. And actually, the function would, would actually look like this. The maximum function would literally look like this. Okay, this is literally what the, the max function looks like. Okay, it's a piecewise function. So, you will come across integrals with max and min. Uh, min is, you know, the, the opposite, right? This is the min. The min is just here. Right, this is the min. Right, depending, oops, uh, depending on the function, right? If it was, if it said min, then you know these two would would flip, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get into the integral examples. Okay, we have the max of x and x squared. Okay, so I mean, all I know is that um, from between zero to one, the function x x would be bigger than x squared, right? Because if it was between zero to one, like let's say if you test one half, you know, one half is bigger than one fourth, right? So of course, x, uh, x is greater than x squared at this interval. At, but if x is between one to two, then x squared would definitely be bigger than x, right? C clearly we know that, right? Exponents makes things bigger. Just except at the interval from 0 to 1. Okay? So, this means that we have to split this up from 0 to 1. The max is x, and the max between from 1 to 2 is x squared. So, our answer would be like 1 half plus um, what? x cubed over 3 from 1 to 2. This would be like 8 thirds, 8 thirds minus 1 third, 7 thirds. So I'm just going to leave my answer as 1 half plus 7 over 3. So this would be my answer for this integral. Again, we gotta, we got to practice our uh, piecewise integration skills, uh, how to integrate things manually. we got to practice manual piecewise integration. So how do we solve this? I believe this, is, this integral is from Harvard-MIT, Integration B. And we... You know, the best thing to do is just start small, start small, 
Okay, let's focus. Let's focus on this portion. Okay, we're just going to start small. So it seems that we're going to split between 15. So from 0 to 15, you know, we know that x is going to be, uh, well, if x is between 0 to 15, then of course the minimum is going to be x. So we have max of 5x here. And then plus 15 to 20, uh, 15 is going to be uh, the minimum. So what we have is max of 5, uh, and then minimum would be 15 here. Okay? And would you look at that? This is a constant, right? What's the max of this? 15. This whole portion is equal to 15. Okay. So what we have is the integral uh well, I mean, this whole integral is just going to equal to 15 times 20 minus 15. That's 5. Okay, so we have like 15. So this, this portion, this integral here, is equal to 15 times 5, which is like 75, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So here, however, we need to split this as, as well because we have 5. So from 0 to 5, from 0 to 5, 5 is the max. Because you know if x is between zero to five, you know it's it's less than five, obviously. So you know we the max is just going to be five at that interval. And then from five to fifteen, from five to fifteen, uh, x is the maximum. Okay. And then seventy-five plus seventy-five is dx. Okay. And now you just go ahead and solve it. Five times five is twenty-five. So we have a hundred plus, uh, well, we can just go straight into integration here, x squared over 2 from 5 to 15. I'm a little lazy, so I mean this is like 15 squared minus 5 squared over 2. That's like, what, 10 times 20 over 2? Is that what that is? 10 times 20? And then, uh, wow, this is also... 100. So I believe our answer, so we have 100 plus 100. So our answer is 200. So this integral is equal to uh, 200. Okay. So again, whenever you see, you know, something intimidating, take small steps, breathe, take small steps, start, you know, start with the inner and then uh, work your way out. Okay. Okay. So we have a big monstrous integral here. Okay, don't freak out. Breathe. Don't freak out. Do not freak out. It's going to be okay. We're just going to have to work our way around this. So, again, this looks like a bunch of complicated functions. I don't know how they interact with each other. How, how are we going to figure out which function is bigger, whatever. So, first off, we need to find our intersection points, right? If you remember the concept of the graph, of, of how max and min's work, right? You know, if, it if you compare two functions, we have to split the integral based off of their intersections, right? So that's what we're going to do. So how do we find our intersections? What we do is we let, you know, the, fun the two functions that we compare, uh, we kind of let them equal to each other and try to find uh, what, what values of x are equal to each other. In this case, I see that 0 and pi over 2 equal to each other. Okay, so because we're working with 0 to pi, the only split we need is probably pi over 2. Okay, so that's no problem. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind in the reference. Well, actually, we're, we're going to split it right now, actually. We'll go ahead and split that right now. So, From 0 to pi over 2. Okay. And then what you do is you kind of test uh, you test uh, numbers between 0 to pi over 2. Because you know that it's it's not going to change increasing, decreasing, because, I mean, you found the intersections. So, so by testing each uh, number, or not each number, just any number between these two uh, bounds, so let's say pi over 4, if I plug in pi over 4, uh, that's, that's going to give me 1 fourth. 
if I plug in pi over 4, it's going to be give me 1 over root 2. So which is which is more minimum? 1 over root 2 or 1 fourth? Uh, obviously 1 fourth, right? So what we have here, so because this is 1 fourth, this is smaller, our minimum function for this portion here is going to be 2x over pi. Okay? So now with the minimum on this side, uh, which is which is more uh, minimum? If I plug in pi over 4, and then the other half, uh, sorry, the other half, pi over 2, from pi, I mean, because we already found its minimum portions, uh, we already knew immediately that the other side is going to be the opposite. Okay? Okay, so now what? What do we do here? So here, now we have to find the intersection between these two functions, 2x over pi equals 1 minus 2x over pi. Okay, that's going to give us 4x over pi equal to 1, so x is equal to pi over 4. So that's where we have to split at. We have to split at pi over 4. Got it. So let's do that. Splitting at from 0 to pi over 4. Here, if you plug in uh, pi over 8, right, we get uh, 1 fourth. Plug in pi over 8 here, we get 3 fourths. So, of course, our maximum is going to be here. And then from pi over 4 to pi over 2, our maximum is going to be here. Okay? Awesome. And then here, for the max, uh, what is the maximum for uh, pi from pi over 2 to pi? Which which is uh, higher, sine or cosine? Well, I mean, if we, we can just look at the unit circle. If we go from here to pi over 2 to pi, it seems that... Um, well, notice that cosine is always going to be negative. And then sine is always going to be positive. So because of that, this whole this whole interval, sine of x will always be the maximum. Okay. Cool. And then you just simply integrate. You just simply integrate. Just you know, basic integration. I'm just going to go by quick for the sake of time. For the sake of time, you know, if you you know doing uh, basic integration, you should end up with the answer three pi over eight plus one. Okay? This should be your answer. Okay? So again, you know, whenever you come across like two different functions, you know, let uh, equal it to each other and then find its roots so that you can find where to split the bounds. Okay? Find the intersections. Oh boy. All right, now it's, mm, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> okay. So, it seems like we have 0 to 2 pi, and then we have a min and max of some sines and cosines, except that at the bottom we have e to the power of sine or cosine. So, how do we approach this? So again, first off, we need to find uh, intersections, right? And it seems like, you know, for both of these, it, we're just going to have to, you know, I mean, all we're going to use is just this, right? And of course, they, they equal whenever x is equal to pi over 4, uh, 3 pi over 4, um, right? Three pi, oh, no, no, not, I'm sorry, not 3 pi over 4. Um, pi over 4, this portion here. This portion here is 5 pi over 4. Okay, 3 pi over 4 is here. That's going to give us like a negative, whatever. So this and this only. Not not this, not this. Okay? So pi over four, five pi over four. So that is where we have to split. Okay. From zero to pi over four. Alright, so from zero to pi over four, uh what is our minimum here? Well, thankfully for our uh unit circle, our minimum is seems to be sine of x. Okay. And because our minimum is sine of x, 
our maximum is going to be cosine of x. So for our max, it's going to be e to the power of cosine of x. Awesome. All right, what about pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4? So that's this whole portion here, right? So what, what is min and what is max? So our minimum is going to be, let's see, throughout here, it seems that, I think, I believe, cosine? Is cosine, oh yeah, 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 cosine seems to be our minimum. Cosine seems to be our minimum throughout this whole portion here. And the reason is because here, cosine is negative. Cosine is negative here. And so because of that, uh, that really does make cosine the minimum between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And so because of that, our opposite is going to be maximum e to the sine of x. Okay? And then 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi, then that means we're just we're going back here, right? We are going back to 2 pi. Uh, here it's uh, the same thing as I believe uh, sine of x, right? Sine of x e to the cosine of x dx. Okay? And there you go. And here you you know you already see that this is just basic integration. Right, this is u substitution that e to the negative, negative cosine of x from 0 to pi over 4. This is also e to the sine of x. I'm sorry, negative. Uh, this would be negative as well. Also e to the negative cosine of x as well here. And then you should end up, uh, do all the tedious uh, computations, you should end up as your answer 2 minus e to the negative root 2 over 2 minus 2 e to the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, this one's negative and this one's positive. Okay, that's the difference. Right, so you can write your answer like this or you can write it like Wolfram Alpha where it's equal to negative 4 uh, cinch hyperbolic sine of 1 over root 2. Okay? All right. That was our last integral. So again, get comfortable with the max and min. This is how we uh, perform manual integration with piecewise functions. Okay? So rewatch and practice the integral on your own. See if you can uh, get comfortable integrating with these type of piecewise functions. Okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next part.